Welcome to the most prized of all diamonds, the baseball diamond. 80,000 square feet of perfectly manicured grass and clay. Every inch can make the deciding difference in a game. But of the entire field, this is the undisputed king. Almost every element of the game is dependent upon home plate. Home plate determines where the batter stands. It governs the basis of the strike zone. It dictates just where the catcher will crouch and how the umpire will gain his perspective. The 90 degree angle at the tail is ground zero for the foul lines which extend for literally hundreds of feet. And of course, home plate is that sought after grail, the sacred ground where runs are scored, victories earned, champions crowned. But as the start and finish point of the entire baseball battlefield, home plate does not emerge from these contests undisturbed. Before the first pitch, it is a pristine sheet of white, but the very first batter can soil this sacred rubber slab. As the game plays, the dust flies as the batter plants his feet, as the catcher chases a pop fly, or as the runner slides in. And when it's time to run for home, the entire plate can become unrecognizable. And if home plate becomes unrecognizable, the rest of the field falls apart. Where is the strike zone? Where is that goal for the runner rounding third? But home plate is unlike the rest of the field, which is torn up over the course of the game. Before every inning, the umpire pauses to purify the solid surface of the plate. And at any point during the game, any player around the plate can call timeout and the umpire will immediately clean it. But what if this isn't just baseball? Imagine for a moment that this is your soul at baptism. Pure, clean, and able to do what it is intended to do. But then life begins and sin enters. Just a speck, a blemish, a tarnish. But as St. Augustine said, a number of grains makes a heap. And then it wasn't just once. It happened again and again. Your soul was covered by your sin so that you couldn't even see the difference between safe and out, between right and wrong. And it is now when we see that we are blind. We know that we're covered. For as St. John the Apostle writes, if we say we have no sin, we've deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. So, what then is our hope? Above all, confession. God became man and died so that at any time we can run to Christ in the sacrament and he will brush it all away and we start over clean. Reconciliation. Welcome home.